Tonight we'll be starting a playthrough for When Eagles Fight um, from the 1914 dual pack um, published by GMT Games. Originally designed by Ted Racer um, in the magazine format, uh, it was repurposed and then repackaged um, some years ago. But this particular title, When Eagles Fight, um, depicts the um, First World War, specifically the Eastern Front with Germany and Austria-Hungary versus Russia. Now in terms of um, the complexity of the rules, there's nothing um, terribly um, complex about it. So this really won't be a rules uh, overview or uh, how to play. We're sort of gonna dive in and um, go through the, the, the playthrough for this campaign. I'll be doing it solo, two-handed. Um, but the overall situation is, so this is, depicts the outbreak of the war in 1914, August 1914. That goes until um, spring of 1917. And the way that the uh, Germans essentially win is either uh, taking Petrograd, which is going to be all the way up there in the north, or they essentially cause the... Um, the overthrow of the Tsar. And they do that by occupying cities and there's random events that will influence that as well. Short of that, they they really can't win. Uh, they basically have to demoralize the Russians at home. Conversely, the Russians uh, can win by seizing uh, some of the imperial cities, either the dual, one of the dual capitals of Austria-Hungary or Berlin itself. Now, for those of you who are vaguely aware of the beginning of the First World War, uh, Germany knew that the lion's share of the fighting would, ha would, would, would be on the Eastern Front. They hoped uh, uh, to knock out the French with a quick victory, obviously within six weeks, and then they could pivot and mobilize and um, via rail, send the rest of their corps and armies to the Eastern Front to knock out the Russians. Now, historically, that's not how that happened. Uh, after uh, failing to knock the French out. Um, we have the classic race to the sea and establishment of trench warfare. And when people think about popular depictions of the First World War, they obviously think of trench warfare and the Western Front. Um, but interestingly enough, the Eastern Front, because of the vast expanses, not that trenches weren't built and used, obviously, in virtually uh, any warfare, uh, especially the defensive kind, across time it uses trenches, but it did, trenches were not used in the density and um, to the same scale as they were in the first uh, or in the, on the Western Front. So their hopes are to knock out the uh, traditional Western allies of Britain and France and pivot here, which is why uh, the German forces are kind of meager uh, on the board. We'll go ahead and uh, zoom in and take a look at the Austro-Hungarian front. They have to do some mandatory attacks in the beginning. And then um, the uh, rule book for the Winnie Eagles fight actually provides instructions on, on how to essentially replicate uh, Tannenberg. Um, the, uh, in terms of sequence of play, um, the, for the first turn, it's assumed that the Russians uh, have already moved. So it's essentially a German reaction. Uh, and they have a particular counter, um, the Oberost, which allows them to essentially conduct two uh, attacks in a row, which um, could be especially devastating, especially if they um, if they can trap certain corps and armies, which they plan to do with the um, at Tannenberg itself. All right, here's the Austria-Hungarian line. From here, they're going to have to make at least three uh, two to one odds attacks. Most likely try to concentrate them at the end of the lines. Um, most likely move this core up and take advantage of the defensive benefits of being on a river and maybe extending the Austro-Hungarian lines up here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and move up to Tannenberg. And we've got three Russian corps here. And then with um, the Oberost ability, 
if the Germans have them, essentially be able to make two consecutive attacks. Um, and like I said before, there's instructions in the book to essentially to try to simulate uh, the elimination of those cores at Tannenberg. So here are the results of the encirclement. Uh, the 3rd Reserve Division, 17th Corps, and the 1st Corps uh, broke through the fortress at Lumia, swung to the south, and cut off these corps from the south. And then the 20th Corps advanced north um, and eliminated the 1st Russian Corps in combat and with the Oberost, which essentially allows a second combat happen with whatever hex it's in. Uh, any in-supply German unit within two hexes can participate. Um, so they will go ahead and throw themselves in uh, against that stack there. All right, with a modified result of eight that eliminates the 23rd Corps, the 15th Corps, and the 13th Corps. So something akin to the historical results, all three of those are eliminated. We'll go ahead and we'll take the 20th Corps and they will move into Tannenberg proper. And then this, the Oberost won't be available until turn three, which will be October of 1914. So we'll go ahead and we'll deal with the uh, required Austro-Hungarian attacks in the south. Now, technically, I should have resolved this before I went on to the uh, Oberos combat, but hey, I'm playing Solitaire, so no harm, no foul. Here, um, the Austrians are launching uh, attacks across the Russian sort of left flank, if you're facing west, um, leaving a, a bit of a space here that could be exploited, but hopefully by putting enough pressure on this flank, um, on the southern part of uh, Russian Poland that if the attacks go well enough um, could dissuade any push by the Russians although at this point with the fragility of the Austro-Hungarian um, forces any losses they take will, will be pretty severe um, as it was in history the victory is not going to come from this front. It's just how badly are they going to get battered, and it just can't collapse. Is essentially, it's um, it's dead weight on the Germans. So hopefully, with the attacks that have got lined up here, they can inflict some damage on the Russians, um, and be more more useful uh, than they were historically. All right, we've made our way through August, September, October, November, December. So essentially, we're at the end of 1914, going into the beginning of 1915. Uh, the Austrian-Hungarians had a good series of attacks pushing the Russians back to the Polish-Austro-Hungarian border, but it left um, their right flank pretty exposed. It was a fierce uh, Russian counterattack. Uh, the Austrians were able to extricate themselves and retract their lines um, and the Russians closed. And there's been a bit of back and forth um, due to the limitations of their supply lines. Um, you can only trace, um, obviously trace from the, the railheads, but from a population center or a town, it only extends by four. So for the Russians here, it would appear um, Tarnopol is their sort of the termination point for supply. So they can count one, two, three, four. So even though they can over um, extend the Austrian Hungarian lines, they can't push really any further um, because they'd be out of supply. As you can see, there's some ammo shortages. Um, those are sort of starting to kick in, uh, which eliminates well, reduces the offensive firepower and defensive firepower by half. Um, the Austro-Hungarians have been, even though they're uh, accumulating a lot of replacements, they're hesitant to attack because um, these core with the asterisks, once they're eliminated, they can never come back. These are technically one-step units. When they come back, they come back on their reduced side. 
Um, so the Austrian-Hungarians have been staving off um, a collapse by being uh, very conservative. So far, they haven't had to rely on any German help to prop them up. But obviously, that could change in the future. So um, despite some forward advances by the Austrians, um, they were able to, they were counterattacked uh, by the Russians, were able to absorb it and have established um, a fairly solid line here. Well, the Russians are beginning to chip away at the defenses um, just south of, gosh, what is this city? It is Lemberg. No fortress there, but um, with it being a city, uh, it may be a little more difficult difficult to, to take. So the Russians may be in a position uh, coming into 1915 uh, to hit that directly. So we'll go ahead and check up um, the rest of the front um, and see what's um, been happening. So the rest of the front has been simultaneously dynamic yet static. Um, First, to note that there's kind of a large gap here in the lines. The um, Russians have been con focusing on containing the bulk of the German army in East Prussia. They do have the supply lines to push towards Lodz, um, but outside of Lodz, Without seizing this, their supply lines can't really extend further than Avangrad or Warsaw. So without putting a lot of effort to seizing that, they really can't piggyback from there. So then the nat next natural place would be Breslau and Posen, and they don't really have the offensive firepower to push that way. And if they did, they would open themselves up from counterattack from the north. All this is a delicate balance there were a couple of encircling battles in East Prussia. The Russians would, um, they pushed through and broke through and tried to um, isolate a uh, German corps uh, that wind up getting destroyed later anyway. But then the uh, Germans counterattacked with their Oberost and they wind up surrounding a couple of um, Russian corps, uh, almost in a replication of Tannenberg uh, in the beginning. So there's been a lot of back and forth. Um, the Russians have been taking a lot of losses, but their um, reinforcement rate is, is pretty impressive. Um, so far, even in the four turns that have played, they've been able, uh, they've had 11 steps as replacements um, compared to none for the Germans and for the 10 for the Austro-Hungarians. So, the Germans are probably looking to take a bit of an operational pause here until they have more units um, flowing in. Now, uh, for a moment, I was tempted to bring them south to hit Warsaw because that's the large supply link um, for the rest, for, basically for all of Poland. Um, but without the heavy artillery that's not set to come on board till early 1915, um, sort of a waste of time. I didn't want the German army to be bogged down here. But they, despite some battlefield successes, they haven't been able to move the lines. But I think it's more in their interest uh, to continue pushing um, to the northeast, um, potentially crossing the Neiman River here. That way they can extend the Russian lines uh, and potentially get round. Um, but their, their fort at Lotzen has anchored their defense. Um, again, there's been a lot of back and forth, some encircling battles, um, but from a distance, it, it, it seems that the lines haven't changed a lot, but there has been a lot going on. So beginning with Tannenberg and these opening moves here, the war is well underway, um, but both sides are looking to um, change up the initiative, seize it perhaps, uh, and look for more decisive results.